Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to talk about terminal velocity. Uh, how does an object reach terminal velocity? How does the forces on the object change when it reaches terminal velocity? And we will also see the speed time or the velocity time graph of the object as it starts falling from initial velocity and finally reaches terminal velocity. So we will be talking mainly about what are the forces acting on the object as it reaches terminal velocity, how does the value of those forces change, how does the acceleration of the object change and what happens to the final velocity of the object. So let us start with it, let's see how we can show it step by step. Okay, when we say an object has reached terminal velocity, we basically mean the object has reached a constant velocity. Its velocity is not increasing any further, neither is it decreasing any further. It has reached a constant level, okay? So why would it reach a constant level when it's falling down or when it's moving with a resultant force? That's what we are going to see. Now I'm showing an example for an object falling freely through air. Of course, there has to be air for the object to reach terminal velocity. If an object is moving through vacuum, it cannot reach terminal velocity because there is no one opposing it. There has to be an opposing force on it. So we are assuming this object is falling in presence of air and there is a significant air resistance acting on it. Okay. So let's assume we have an object of mass 2 kg. Of course, its weight is 20 Newton. We are assuming the weight to be 20 Newton. So we are assuming the weight to be 20 Newton on the fact that we have taken the gravitational field strength to be 10 Newton per kg. So in O levels we take it as 10 Newtons per kg, in A levels we will take it as 9.81 Newtons per kg. But let's just keep it 10 Newton for per kg for this example. So the weight is 20 Newton and the acceleration we will find from here. So when the object is falling, initially it's from rest, it's at rest and we have dropped the object from here. It's falling down, it has a weight of 20 Newton and a mass of 2 kg. At the very beginning, the only force acting on it is the weight of the object. So we can assume the resultant force on the object is the weight of the object as the mass of the object is 2 kg. From there, we can find the acceleration to be 10 meters per second square. We know the formula of acceleration resultant force divided by mass. Since the object is accelerating, 10 meters per second square we know is the acceleration of free fall. Okay? So as the object is accelerating, we can say its velocity is going to increase, which was initially at rest, now its velocity increases. Now one thing you should remember, the air resistance acting on an object depends on the velocity of the object. The faster the object moves, more is the air resistance acting on the object. So here, the object was initially at rest, now it's accelerating, that means its velocity increases, right? So as the velocity increases, there was no air resistance on it before, but now there is an air resistance acting on it. I have just taken the value randomly, 5 Newton. So let's say the air resistance acting on the object is now 5 Newton. Why did the air resistance start acting? because now it is moving, it has a velocity which is increasing. So the air resistance is now 5 Newton. Now let us find the acceleration again. The resultant force is now 20 minus 5, 15 Newton. Mass still remains 2 kg. So the acceleration is now 7.5 meters per second square. You see, the acceleration of the object has decreased. You cannot say it is decelerating, but you can say that the acceleration has reduced. It is still accelerating. Before, it was accelerating at 10 meters per second square. Now it is accelerating at 7.5 meters per second square, but it is still accelerating. Since its velocity is still increasing from before, whatever it was here, it's still increasing because it's accelerating. The air resistance on the object will also increase. It was 5. Now it is 15 Newton. So the air resistance on the object increases. The resultant force on the object is now only 5 Newton. So starting the resultant force was 20 Newton. It was very large because there was no air resistance. Then the air resistance started acting because the velocity increased. As the velocity increased further, the air resistance also increased. And now the acceleration is only 2.5 meters per second square. But it is still accelerating. It's not decelerating. It is still 
accelerating. So the acceleration of 2.5 meters per second square means the object's velocity is still increasing at 2.5 meters per second, 2.5 meters per second every second. Okay, so as it is still accelerating, the air resistance would increase further. It was 15 Newton here. Now it has increased to 20 Newton. Why? Because the velocity was increasing, the air resistance kept on increasing. And at this point, the air resistance becomes equal to the weight of the object. So you can say the resultant force becomes zero, the acceleration becomes zero. It does not accelerate any further. So it started from rest, it kept on accelerating, the acceleration decreased, 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 and at one point the acceleration becomes zero. But what happened to the velocity of the object? Initially, the velocity was zero, then the velocity increased from here. Let's take a random value. Let's say the velocity increased from zero to 20 meters per second. Because it was accelerating, it increased further. Let's say it increased to 26 meters per second. Still, it was accelerating, so let's say it increased to the final velocity. Let's say it increased to 28 meters per second. And at this point, the acceleration stopped. So you cannot say the velocity will increase any further. This object will keep on falling with this constant velocity of 28 meters per second. The values of 20, 26, 28, these are all random values that I have taken. I have not calculated it just to explain it to you. So the velocity kept on increasing, increasing, increasing and at one point it stopped increasing because the acceleration became zero and the object kept on moving with a constant velocity. This constant velocity is called the terminal velocity of the object. So during reaching the terminal velocity, what happened to the object's forces acting on it? Initially, the only force was its weight. Then there was air resistance acting on it and the air resistance kept on increasing. It kept on increasing until it reached the value equal to the weight of the object. So first thing is air resistance increased. How long did it increase? Until it reached the or it uh, became equal to the weight of the object. What happened to the resultant force on the object? Initially the resultant force was the weight of the object. Then it decreased, it decreased further and eventually it became zero. So we can say the resultant force decreases and becomes zero okay and what happened to the velocity of the object the velocity of the object kept on increasing until it reached a maximum value so velocity increases and reaches constant value and the acceleration decreases to 0. It started from 10, 7.5, 2.5 and eventually reached 0. So these are the changes that occurs on an object when it falls through air or when it's facing frictional forces acting on it and even though the weight of the object remained constant, that is the downward force remained constant but its acceleration kept on decreasing, eventually it became 0. Okay, so the weight remains the same, but the acceleration kept on decreasing and eventually reaches zero. So these are the things you have to keep in mind. What are the changes that is happening when an object is falling through air or when it's facing frictional forces and how does the value of this thing changes, okay? I hope the video helped you out. We will see the graph of this object. How does it fall and how does the graph velocity time graph looks like in the next video? All right, everyone, see you again in the next video. Keep watching the videos so that uh, you can understand better. Thank you everyone.